So lesson's gonna be about Z index and how we can change the stacking order of the page elements. By default, it's just gonna stack wherever the page elements fall within the HTML. But with the Z index, you can give it an integer value, which will change the stack of where it's located. So by default, we had the box one, two, three, and four. Right now we've got box number one has a Z index of 10, which is larger than box number two, which has a Z index of five. So that's where we see the blue is overlapping the green. And then on top of the blue and the green is the red, because that's got a value of 100. So if this was changed to a smaller number, that would change the order. And now you can see the red box has gone behind the blue. It's still, it's actually behind the green as well. And we just got the opacities that are set so that we can see the boxes that are underneath as we update the Z index. So that's all coming up in this lesson. Z index is a CSS property that sets the Z order of positioned elements that you can do with CSS styling. So we've got an example here where we've got some HTML code, got several different page elements. So we've got a main div that we've got a class of output and then class one, box one, box two, box three, box four that we've got that we're going to be applying the different Z index styling properties to and changing the different stacking orders of those elements. So let's go into the style sheet that I've got linked to the CSS and we're going to select the page element with a class of output and then all of the divs that are directly descended within those we're going to apply style properties to them. So setting up a border so that we can see where each one starts and ends. So giving them a solid border and we'll set a black border to each one of those. Set a width of 200 pics for them. And that's them being applied on the right hand side within the web browser. Also set a height for those. So we have 100 pics on the height of them. And I'll make this smaller. Right now it's zoomed in at 200%, so it's fairly large. So that gives us all three of the, or all four of the page elements. And we'll apply different background colors to each one. So we'll set one to be background color of blue for the first one. The second one can have a background color of green. Third one, we'll set a background color of red. And then the fourth one can have a background color of yellow. So selecting all of the elements and applying the various color properties to each one of the elements. So let's also set the div. So that each one of these divs, we're gonna set the position and set the position to relative. And then also gonna add in an opacity to those so that you can see slightly through them because we are gonna be using the Z index. So the opacity is gonna be set to 0.7. So that means that they're going to be slightly see-through and when we move them within the page, it's going to be a lot easier to see them and see where they're located at. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a page element and we'll take the yellow page element first, set its position of absolute, and then set the top to zero and the left position to zero. And we're going to because we want to move all four of the boxes, so let's update the position relative to be position absolute. So that's going to allow us to position each one of the boxes. And then we've got the yellow box, that's the last one on the page. So that's where it's getting the Z index and it's covering the other boxes that are underneath it. Uh, we can also move the position slightly over. So we're going to give it a position of top 40 and left 40 as well. Uh, let's move the other elements and then we'll add in the Z index. So let's set box three to 30 and 30. And that should be picks to give the unit size of where we're locating the element. And I'll just save that. And then also for the previous ones, so for the green box, which is number two. So give that 20 and 20. And then the first one can be 10 and 10. So I will give this type of stacking order. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna update the Z index. So we'll start with the first one and set a Z index for this element and giving it a value. So this is a numeric value that you set for the Z index. And this can be any set of values that you wanna use. So you can start with whatever number that you want. And it's just gonna be including the Z index value. If you don't set 
it's not going to establish a new stacking order and it's going to just stack it at the current context which is zero so if you want it to be something other than zero then you can set an integer for that value so let's set a value of five for the integer and we see what happened here within the example I can zoom it in slightly is that now the blue box is covering over top of the other boxes i'll make the border slightly thicker so a little bit easier there to see them and we'll also change the opacity down to five so we can see through them so now we've got the blue box on top of the other boxes and let's set some other z indexes so set a z index to box number two and we're going to first start by setting all of the z indexes to five and what happens is that the z indexes if they're all equal then the one that has the last property that's set within the page so that's going to be that box four so if we were to move up box four that would position it there as the first item so wherever the elements fall on the html page that's going to be what the z index is going to stack the order by and then we can update these order stacks by changing the z index so we change it to zero which is the default and that's just going to give it a default stacking order so we can see the red box now is behind the other boxes if we set it to 100 so that's going to give it the largest z index value and that's going to place it on top of the lower numbers so the higher the number the higher it is within the stacking content and it's going to place it on top of the other content so if we were to change this one to have less opacity this one will be able to be visible so if we change it to opacity one and we'll set the opacity on each individual one separately so that we can better see that page elements. So because the opacity on the box number three is set to one, it's covering up over top of the other elements and we've got the Z index to 100. So if we want to move the Z index of the blue box, so if we set it to 500, that's gonna place that over top and let's uh, remove out some of the opacity of the blue box. We can still slightly see, so it's got, now the new order is blue, red, and then yellow and green. Let's uh, update the value of yellow. So I'm gonna set that to nine as well and give this a value of 150. So that's gonna be falling between the red and the blue. So now the order is gonna be blue, yellow, red, and green. So green is way back there in the bottom. So that's what you can do with the Z index. It updates the stacking order of the page elements. So give it a shot and try it out for yourself to get more familiar with what you can do with Z index and styling.